Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third revision class for SSC 401. Hopefully today, we intend to conclude our revision and leave you to go and prepare for your examination in which we wish you the very best of luck. Now, there are five of us on the uh, platform namely Adekola, Abisala Rukayat, Adetaya Olatunde, Adiyama Olamide, and Olamide Konkundele, four from your end plus my very self making the fifth person. Okay. So hopefully others will join us in the course of the election. And if they don't, we will make the video of the lecture available as usual. And then they can follow through what we have done. Can you all see the uh, uh, material which I have projected on the screen? Yes, sir. That's good. Welcoming Rukayat on board. Thank yes. you, sir. We stylishly, we stylishly delayed to enable you to join us. Okay. So this topic is a little te technical and requires a lot of attention. You are not required to really memorize all of the contents, but there are things which I want you to pay attention to, and I'll be drawing your attention to those things when we get there. The genesis or the preamble to this lecture is, is the fact that transactions are conducted are conducted day to day on a, a historical cost basis, which at the time of transaction is also the current cost. What I mean is that if you buy if you buy your phone today now, the cost to you as of today is both historical cost and current cost. Because historical cost is the cost at which transactions are conducted. In the future, the cost will not be the same again. But as of today, the historical cost is equal to the current cost on the date of transaction. That is the, that is the, that is the logic. We are now saying that uh, when items are held for a long time, and then we are, we are showing it using the historical cost convention at the historical cost, the results or output might be misleading to the to the business community that rely on such financial statement. That is why there are theories on uh, accounting. Well, one of such theories is the current cost accounting and current purchasing power methods. I'll be taking you through the contents uh, uh, as we as we go ahead. Accounting theory provides a general frame of reference by which accounting practices can be judged. And it also guides the way to the development of new practices and procedures. That is the opening quote, which I have tried to explain to you. There's no universal acceptable method of presenting accounting, but the ones you have found in use today are those ones which are just commonly agreed upon by, by people. A deductive approach says that let us, let, us, let us observe accounting practices the way it is done. You are, you are, we are seeing accounting as the way it is done. The normative approach says, let us see accounting the way it ought to be done. Can you see the difference now? What are accountants doing now? When we look at those ones, that is the inductive approach. What do they ought to do? That is the normative approach. Both approaches in theory are acceptable. And the third one is a less ambitious approach, approach which uh, looks at the users of financial statements and finding out what information they require such that what they require will be those things which are now presented to them. And that is the current approach which is being used in practice in the business community. The approach culminated in the corporate report. And what is the corporate report? Your statement of income, your statement of financial position, your value added statement, your statement of changes in equity, another company pass of a, a set of financial statements which are included in published uh, accounts. So what we are saying is that the current uh, accounting structure or financial statement pre pre uh, preparatory structure that we have now is a product of a mix of various considerations and theories of, um, or, or postulations by various authorities. That's what we have here now. So we now want to see the practical or numerical interpretation of some of those theories. So we now see how is income measured? How is income, what is an income? What is an income to you, you know? Uh, as a business person, you can consider income or profit as increase in cash. In a way, in a business environment where you don't hold stock balances, 
there are no inventory balances. All you, all you do is just transact in cash. You only, buy, you only buy what you want to sell. You don't keep stocks overnight. So when you sell, when you sell those items, and uh, you you definitely buy you definitely sell at a price above uh, your your cost price, except you are not normal. Will somebody sell below below his cost price? A down. No sir, no sir. Hey, yeah. respond now. Adiemo, you don't know whether you will sell below your cost price. Allow me there. This guy just put on uh, something there and left the place, Abi. I have marked a lot of absent until I hear from her. Okay, so no, nobody will want to sell below cost. So if you are selling above your cost, it means the increase of your selling price over your, your cost price is your profit. Yeah, so so when, you, when you don't have that profit in cash, since you're not selling on credit or you're not holding stock balances, so you can regard profit as increase in cash. You count the money with which you started business. And after you made your sale, you now count the money, the money that you have. But you find the difference. The difference is your profit as increase in cash. So I give an example there of uh, uh, any affair. That example is what you can just check. Somebody bought, uh, started business with 100,000. Um, but on the rents is store in the market at four naira a day. He bought goods worth uh, nine thousand, and sold all the goods for sixteen thousand in cash. At the end of uh, the day, what would be uh, in your first asset? It would be one hundred six thousand. The initial hundred thousand which he, he had, plus sixteen thousand which he collected in cash from his sales, but the nine thousand which he spent on purchases. And then minus 400, which is the rent of the uh, market store for one day. So it now has 6,600 with him. What would that be the profit? Probably this 6,600 minus 100,000. And that is uh, 6,600. Uh, that, 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 that is his profit. So profit has increased in cash. But when you say profit has increased in weight, this one takes us to a scenario whereby the trader does not sell all that he buys on, the, on, on, on a particular day. And he has to keep inventory overnight or across an accounting period. So when there is inventory, when there are balances of goods on sold at the end of an accounting period, it gives, it gives rise to uh, inventories, inventory at the end. You know? So after the, after the uh, business cycle has continued, you will, you will then be having inventory at the beginning and inventory at the end. So in such a case, you cannot measure your income as profit uh, or profit as increase in cash again. It then becomes profit as increase in wealth. Wealth. Wealth will now be determined by both your cash holding and your stock holding and some other, other forms in which you are holding your, your, your assets. If, for instance, the, the, the trader used part of the capital to buy non-current assets like motor vehicles, like uh, buildings, like plant and machineries, all of those items in the estimate of financial position equally add to its wealth, not just uh, inventory balances alone. So inventory, I mean, uh, profit again can be, can be measured as increase in wealth. To give an example of that, we go back to, to say that uh, uh, this any affair now, if he has stock balances, the value of the stock that he's holding will be added to uh, is a uh, takings to enable you determine what his profit uh, is. Okay, do you understand that, or you want us to give you a numerical uh, illustration of that? I'm talking to people now. You understand, sir. Why are you yes, the only person talking? I'm here as well, sir. I'm here as well, sir. But you should not to partake in the, in the discussion, Abby. Sir, I'm here. Obisola is here. It's not you just being here. I want you to talk. When, when I ask questions, respond. 
your color scheme will show that you are you are with us. On like, okay, sir. Uh, uh, who joined us and then went away to the salon. Anyway, do you want an example on that, or you understand that? I am here to. We want to examine why. Let's continue. Approaches to wet my video is just breaking. I can't really hear what you're. Well, you need to adjust where you are or look into your device because you are the only person complaining about that. Change your location and make sure that your network is uh, full. Uh, let me do. And if that continues, listen to the video after the class, but just make efforts to make sure that you are part of us and now. Having mm -hmm. established that you can measure income, you can measure income as increase in wealth and not necessarily increase in cash. It, we, it, it therefore takes us to the need to look at approaches to wealth measurement. Approaches to wealth measurement. One, by finding the values of the individual assets of a business, and subtracting from them the value of the individual liabilities of the business. And that's what you do in uh, your balance sheet. When you total your assets and you less your liabilities, the capital, the equity, and the reserves is the wealth that is remaining to you. That's one approach. Another approach is by measuring the expectation of future benefits by calculating the present value of the expected future net cash flows. That is what you do when you do capital budgeting or when you do investment appraisal in your financial management using your net present value approach. You, you project possible income into the future, and then you discount them using the cost of capital. You obtain what you call the uh, present value of those benefits. Then when you re reduce the capital outlay, the initial cost from those uh, total present value, you have the net present value, which is the increase in wealth. So those are two approaches by which you can measure uh, such. You can measure either by using a discounted approach, discounted cash flow approach, or by using the historical figures of these assets and liabilities and finding the difference, all right? So having known that assets are important in terms of wet valuation, uh, wet, wet measurement, then what are the asset valuation alternatives or, or that we have? One of them is the historical cost. You need to pay attention to this asset valuation alternatives. And the and the question that will follow, okay. So historical cost. This is given as acquisition cost minus depreciation to have a a a, a carrying amount, which we previously know as net book value. And what is the disadvantage of this method? It suffers from lack of precision in accounting choices. For example, there are many methods of depreciation: free line method, the disbalance method, uh, uh, what do you call it? Weighted average cost method. Uh, revaluation method and all sort of methods. And the choice of the, the number of useful life is also subjective. So decision making is not uniform across business community in terms of choice of depreciation method and the length of time for which you want to depreciate the asset. So in the same vein, if you revaluation methods equally suffer the lack of uh, uniformity, you can use FIFO, LIFO, HIFO, NIFO, and all forms of methods. And the choice is not compulsory for, for industries to choose. Companies decide, decide which one they choose. So therefore, subjectivity is involved. That is a major disadvantage of the, uh, of the historical cost method, because the method does what? Suffers from lack of precision in accounting choices. That is the key word there. If I ask you to tell me the, the reason for preference of current cost over historical cost, it is because Historical cost suffers from lack of precision in accounting choices. Do we understand that? The second one, but to my friend, so that's what I mean for Consi. The second one is what we call the adjusted historical cost method. Adjusted historical cost method. When you adjust the historical cost method, you are applying indices, a measure of changes in price levels. That is an index. An index is a measure of changes in levels. When you apply it to price index, it becomes a measure of changes in the levels of price prices, you know, to reflect what the current cost will be when the inflation factor is uh, is uh, is taking cognizance of or is considered. So that is what it is here. Uh, the, by the time you now apply that index into the historical cost, you now get the current cost 
you know, uh, the adjusted value is the, the adjusted value is the current purchasing power of money, with CPP. Uh, an example is this. Imagine we last for five years. The position using the straight line method was depreciated using the straight line method and was bought on January 1, 2004. 500,000 era. In January 2006, the same kind of machine with no superior te 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 uh, technological improvement is bought for 600,000. How many years after 2004? That is two years. You bought when 2004, 500,000. What are that when 2006, which is two years after, for 600,000? Okay. Given the price index of 100 at January 2004, and 120 at January 2006, and 130 at December 2006, present the two machines in the balance sheet as at December 2006. So look at it. I'm going to use the two, the two, uh, in the balance sheet, the two machines, the two machines are using, using the historical cost method. will be shown at 500,000 less depreciation. Let's calculate the depreciation using historical cost method now. Are you there with your calculators? This is where I will know whether you are with me or not. For machine one, 2004, what is the depreciation for, for machine one in 2004? Machine one. What is the decision rate? Division rate. Machine one, you can say so. Division rate is what? If the machine will last for five years, what is the rate of depreciation? Huh? If the question is with you on the board, you are saying, sir, a machine will last for five years using straight line method, what is the rate of depreciation? Huh? Oh my God. Current level accounting students, a machine will last for five years. This is straight line method. What is the depression rate? You don't know. That is 20% now. That is 20%. You divide the, uh, the, the, the cost by five and you allocate one fifth to each of the years. Uh, and one fifth is 20%. One hundred and five is 20%. It is sad that you don't know these things. So what can we do? So 20%, sir. So in each of the years of machine one, you'll be, you'll be having annual depreciation of how much? And down now, if a machine will last for five years. Yes, sir. It will be depreciated equally for those five years. You can straight line, you don't know the middle straight line method. So that method means equal annual depreciation on the asset. What will be the charge for the year, for each year? Adi Tayo. Yes, sir. What will be the charge for each year? Tell us if you don't know so that we can make progress. I tell you, your people ran away from the platform because I'm asking the question. Leaving, leaving only you. <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is Salo? Everybody is Salo. <laughs> Everybody is Salo, Daddy. Eh? What, do you, what, what, what excuse are you giving for them? Money was in Salos. I want to come to Pana. I want to get there. And be a question, you know. Hey, this is interesting. What I'm asking is this: a machine will last for five years. The procedure using straight, the straight line method. You know, so straight line method shows that there will be equal depreciation for each of the useful life of five years. What will be the charge for a single year? That is the question. What is it? If the cost is 500,000 error to last of five years, equal annual depreciation. So what will be the annual figure? I 
How about will you get? I'll get hundred thousand. Can't you see it? A machine will last for five years. The cost is five hundred thousand. Eh? I know the precision is five hundred thousand, which is the cost, and about five years, and then you get one hundred thousand per year. That's the meaning. That is it. At the end of December 2004, what will be the net book value? What will be the net book value? Do you know what net book value is? Down to Obama, down below. Do you know what net book value is? No, sir. Net book value is given as cost. Of an asset, less cumulative depreciation to date. That is net book value. If the cost is five hundred thousand, and depreciation to date is one hundred thousand, what will be the net book value at the end of two thousand and four? You are not following me. This is too simple for you to be thinking about now. I'm not sure you are following me. Cracking, sir. It's eh? cracking, sir. It's what? It's cracking. On crack. But you can hear me now. I can hardly hear you. Ma, I will actually hear you to some extent. So to some extent, I won't hear you again. Eh, but net, net, net book value is not a thing you should be thinking about in year four now. Cost minus depreciation, you know? Cost is five hundred thousand. The position, the position is one hundred thousand. Difference is four. Difference is four hundred thousand. Yes, the net book value as at thirty one twelve two thousand and four is a uh, four hundred thousand for machine one. When you now go to two thousand and six, there will have been depreciation for two years already. Uh, two thousand and four and the two thousand and five. Uh, in fact, for three years even, because. As of December 2006, that machine will have suffered three years depreciation. 100,000 for year one, 2004. 100,000 for year two, 2005. 100,000 for year three, 2006. Take it 300,000. So when you take it away from a, from a, a 500,000, you'll be having 200,000 for machine one. You'll be having 200,000. For machine one at the end of December 2006, you'll be having 200,000. So, machine one, the net book value for machine one at uh, 31 12 2006 at historical cost, uh, at, mm -hmm. at historical cost is given as 200,000. Okay, then for machine for machine uh, two, machine two was bought for 600,000 era. Was for 600,000 era in 2006, January. At the end of December 2006, it will only have suffered one year depreciation. Abby? Yes, sir. Okay. And if the cost is 600,000, divide it by five. So they say it can only last for five years. Divide, by, divide, divide it by five. What will be the annual depreciation? Machine two, annual depreciation will be 600,000. Divided by five, and that will give us 120,000 naira per year. Abi. So at the end of 2006, okay. at the end of 2006, it will only have suffered one year depreciation. Therefore, net book value will be 600,000 mm -hmm. minus 120,000, and that will give us 480,000. Okay. 80,000. That is, that is the historical cost net book value for machine two. All right. We now want to convert these uh, historical cost figures. We want to convert these historical cost figures uh, to to uh, uh, current cost figures. We want to change them to current cost figures. 
You see, uh, at this time, Gundele is showing up now. Oh, I question yet, Tilo. Oh, 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 So, uh, what? Uh, we said never value for machine one and uh, for machine two. As at uh, 31st December 2006, it's a uh, 200,000 and uh, 40,000 respectively. Okay. okay. So, the, they give us price index. They give us price index. The index of 100, 100 at 00, I mean, uh, 2004. Index uh, 2004. Uh, January is 100. January 2006 is uh, 130. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it's 120. And December 2006 is uh, 130. Mm -hmm. The formula to apply in converting these figures to current cost will be to put the index at the end of the year. The index at the end of the year, all over the index, the index on uh, as at the date of purchase index at the end of the year all over the index at the date of purchase you know you're the going to convert at the end of the year is one thousand it's one thousand index at the date of purchasing machine one of purchasing machine one is is one hundred you know the index on the date of date of purchasing machine one is one hundred that is machine one was bought January 2004 and index was one hundred so one thirty or about hundred times five hundred thousand, we give you a current cost figure of uh, six hundred fifty thousand. That is what you have on that machine one cost six fifty thousand. That's what you have on that machine one. They are cost six fifty thousand. Okay, then the depreciation, depreciation to date will be five hundred thousand divided by five. Which is 100,000 times three, which is 300,000, multiplied by 130 or 100, and that will give us 390,000. So that is for all the three years in uh, 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 current cost basis, 390,000. And that's what you have here, 390,000. 390,000. Wait for me, let me, let me test uh, one thing. I want to test something. Okay, so when you subtract that three ninety thousand from this six fifty thousand, what do you have? Two sixty thousand, as you can see in the note. Okay, Editor, are you with me? Yes, sir. yes, I am here. Remember, remember that we have calculated historical cost net book value of two hundred thousand before. For machine one. Do you understand? Yes, sir. That? Yes, sir. Hey. And yes, sir. Net, of value, net of value is also known as carrying mm -hmm. amount under the new accounting standard. We have put carrying amount. The, what used to be there before mm -hmm. is a net book value. That's what they now call carrying amount. You know? Okay. We can, we, without going through the cost and the position approach, I can calculate this carrying amount. By multiply that 200,000 by 130 and then dividing by 100. If you have a calculator, you can test that. 200,000 times 130 all over 100 will give you 260,000. That is the carried amount. 200,000 divided by times 130 all over 100. Is the same 260 now? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, so it means, it means that it means that you have a, you can apply the the price index to the net book value directly, or you can apply it again to each of the component parts that make up the carrying amount. Apply it to cost. Apply it to depreciation. Find the difference. They get your carrying amount. Okay, for machine two now. Are, are, are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For, for machine two now. Machine 2 was bought in January 2006 at a cost of 
600,000 uh, Naira. At the cost of 600,000 Naira, 600,000 Naira. At the end of December 2006, it will only it will only have suffered one year depreciation, you know. And that is 120,000. So the CPP, when you want to bring the cost, the cost after one year, you want to convert the cost to the CPP, current purchasing power cost. It will be 600,000 at the beginning, divided by 130, which is the index at the end, divided by 120, which is the index at date of purchase. It is at one one twenty thousand six. It's one twenty. That's what you use. So the formula is the historical cost multiplied by index at balance sheet date, all over index index at date of purchase. Do you understand that historical cost of the asset multiplied by index uh, at balance sheet date divided by index at the date of purchase. This asset was purchased January 2006, where the index was 120. The, the index at balance sheet date, December 2006, is 130. Therefore, the current purchasing power cost of the machine, of machine two, after one year, is 600,000 times 130, divided by 120, and that gives us 650,000. Okay. Then, what about the depreciation? Depreciation will be 600,000. Divided by five to give you 120,000 times one, times one means for just one year. For just one year, because it was not 2006. I will say 2006. One year. Uh, one year. Then times one and thirty. That's a balance sheet date. And we are 120 in this at date of purchase to give us 130,000. Okay. So if you now look at the, if you, if you now look at the balance sheet again, Look at it. The, the current amount, which is Nebuk value of machine one is 260, of machine two is 720. So we now have 780. This is a restatement. This is a restatement of the balance sheet in, in, current, in, in current purchasing power. So we have applied the index now to it. So that is what I'm talking about there. And we now have different figures to reflect the current purchasing power to show the asset in its real inflation built uh, values. That is just for illustration. Let's continue to the other uh, method. Another method by which you can value, uh, that you can carry a valuation is to use replacement cost. Replacement cost. Replacement cost. You know, uh, if, you want to, if you want to replace the asset, for how much can you, can you get the asset from the open market? So and that is also called the market price. That is the market price. The market price is the replacement cost. You want to replace the asset by buying another one. That is the that is the market price. Okay. Then number four. So if, if you are not talking, at the time you mute your microphone, your background noise is uh, affecting us. At the time you mute your microphone, or you want me to mute you from here. Okay, you have done so. Okay, so just listen to me. Only on mute when you want to talk so that uh, the, your background noise will not be affecting our recording. Okay, we are, we are now on a net addressable net value. Net addressable value. That is the estimated amount that will be received from the sale of the asset, less the estimated cost of its disposal. Then I review, if you sell the asset, you know, you cannot sell the asset at, at the original cost again, you know, because it will, it will, have, it will, have, it will have shown some uh, fall in value. And then um, any amount you receive from the sale of the asset, less the advertisement cost or auctioneering cost or any agency costs which are incidental to its uh, disposal. So the net value is net less value of, of what. So that's another approach of looking at the value of the asset. Then economic value, which is the present value, that is the one I talked about under discounting. When you estimate the future benefits from it, and then you apply the, the, the a discount rate to it. I will now come to the present value of such an asset. And then the, 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 the last one is the private value. The private value. Here you need to pay attention again. Private value. You need to pay attention. In this case, it, it is the amount of money that the owner of the asset would have to receive to compensate him exactly for being deprived of the use of the asset. 
the amount of money that the uh, editor here is lost, leaving the Gundele alone. Okay. So it is the amount of money that the owner of the asset will have to receive to compensate him exactly for being deprived of the use of the asset. So one thing that people should note here is uh, this table, which I decided to show. It is the lower of the replacement cost and the higher of NRV and economic value. Okay, I didn't tell you you are back. You must be struggling with network there. Sorry about that. So the primary value is the lower of replacement cost and the higher of these two. You will first of all check NRV and economic value. Anyone that is higher of the two, you now compare that one with a replacement cost. Then you will have the prior value. Look at this example. Given the following values in respect of assets A, B, and C, replacement cost, 100,000. Net relatable value is 90,000. Economic value is 200,000 for asset A, for asset B, and for asset C. Okay. I'm saying that uh, in calculating the prior value, Compare the net, 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 net relative value with the economic value for asset A, which one is higher? Out of the NRV and the economic value, which one is higher of the two? Now mute and talk now. The economic value. Okay. Two already is more than 90. Okay. So we are going to pick economic value now. We are going to pick economic value. And then compare this economic value with replacement costs. And now the higher of the two is what we now take. I mean, the, 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 uh, is it the higher or the lower? Is the lower. You compare economic value with uh, the replacement cost. Uh, and then you pick the lower. So the DV for asset A is 100,000. Let's go to asset B. In asset B, compare NRV with economic value. Which one is higher? 50 and 70. Which one is higher? The economic value, 70, sir. If you now compare 70 to 80, which one is lower of the two? 70, 70, sir. So the prior value for asset B is 70. Okay. For asset C, don't forget our procedure. You first of all compare the net level value, NRV, with economic value. Okay, in this case now, 40 and 30, uh, NRV is higher at 40. Yes, sir. So you now compare that 40, which is higher, with the replacement cost of 60, and you pick the lower. And the lower of the two is what? Is 40,000. That is how 40, to pick 40, uh, the private value. The private value. A good question to you will be, I can ask you to identify, uh, I can ask you to identify the approaches uh, to asset valuation. I can ask you to identify the approaches to asset valuation. Let's see one of the questions which we decided to, to treat. Let me, let me, let's go back to some of our, some of our questions that we, the 2018, 2019 question is what we want to look at. Let's see. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, look at this question number C. What are the adjustments needed to, for the preparation of current cost financial statements? Uh, capital maintenance has been described as the maintenance of wealth over a period. Identify three approaches to capital maintenance. Okay. Uh, a company has uh, one class of share capital, uh, whatever, we'll come back to that. Let me see if there's another question on, uh, on it that we need to see. Okay, that's all about that. I think there's another Question. Let me let me look at uh, the 2019 2020 as well. Okay. I thought I saw something like what we have just done. That's why I'm checking.
Okay. Uh, look at this A. Look at this A. List the asset valuation methods normally applied in current cost accounting. You see, when I say list the asset valuation methods normally applied in current cost accounting, I'm talking about these methods which I have just explained to you. We're talking about these methods which uh, I have just explained to you. And what are those uh, methods? Asset valuation alternatives, historical costs. I just said historical costs, um, replacement costs, net relaxable value, economic value, the private value. They are asset valuation alternatives. Okay. So we now go to capital maintenance. Capital maintenance has to do with how you can be sure that your wealth does not reduce in value over a period of time. Uh, opening capital and closing capital. You want to be sure that closing capital is not less than opening capital. If you suffer a loss during the period, your closing capital will be less than your opening capital. If you earn a profit during the period, your closing capital will be more than your closing capital. And that is what you desire. So what are the approaches to capital maintenance? Look at uh, this question. Look at this question. Um, a question, a question, I thought, is it this question? Okay. Look at this question here. This question here. Oh. Not this. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Look at uh, this question. Look at this question in particular. You know. Capital maintenance has been described as the maintenance of wealth over a period. Identify three approaches to capital maintenance. Can you see that question now? You know, we will still come back to this. What are the adjustments needed for correction of current cost financial statements? We'll come back to that. But look at this one now. Uh, capital maintenance has been described as the maintenance of wealth over a period. Identify three approaches to capital maintenance. We'll be taking this uh, question after, in fact, this question is in the illustration. So when we take the illustration now that I'm working on it, that will take care of this question. We don't have to come back to it again, except for the part A. So can you see the question now? You good today? So Gundele, Alatunde, can you see the question? Yes, sir, yes, sir, I can see the question. Yeah, okay. If you have that question, I'm giving you the answer now. This is the answer. Approaches to capital maintenance, you know. Number one, money capital maintenance. That is approach number one, money capital maintenance. Approach number two, real capital maintenance. And approach number three, maintenance of specific purchasing power of the capital of the company. Using the price index, which relates to the specific price changes of, of uh, the goods uh, in which. So if you want to answer this question now, anybody asking for the approaches, if you say money capital maintenance approach, recapital maintenance approach, and then maintenance of specific purchasing power of the capital of the company, period. You don't have to, you don't have to go ahead with further explanations. Also remember specific purchasing power of the capital of the company. That's what you need there. Okay, what is money capital maintenance? This applies under the traditional measurement of value in accounting. What is that traditional measurement of value? Historical cost value. Under the assumption of price stability, no, there, there's no inflation. So historical cost figures are valid. In such a case, the net worth of 100,000 at the beginning is deemed to equal a net worth of 100,000 at the end of the period. There are no changes. Since there's no inflation, so no changes. Money capital maintenance assumes stability in value, no changes in value using the historical cost convention. Do we, do we understand that? The real capital maintenance believes that there's a change in value. So the, the purchasing power of, 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 of capital must be reflected using index. So use a general index that shows the general purchasing power of money for that period. That is real capital maintenance. You see, the third one will be the same with the second one except that the index now chosen relates specifically to the purchasing power of the equity of the company. That's got the difference. So now take an example. 
The example here is this. A company has only one class of share capital. The net assets of the company, as of January 2009, were a, a, a million naira. And on 31st December, it became 1 million 400,000. That is the net assets. You know what net assets are? Total assets, less total liabilities. You have net assets. And that net assets is the equity. That is the equity of the, of the company. Do you understand that? OK. So at, at, December 2000, at, at the end of December, the figure is 1,400. Uh, 1, that's what you have. That's what you have in this, in this uh, uh, solution. Net assets at 31, 2009, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4 million. OK. Uh, what would be the increase? What would be the increase in wealth? What would be the increase in wealth at the end of the year? If you use each of the following approaches, either the money maintenance approach, one million, which was historical cost, is still one million. So you subtract one million from one, one million four hundred, you have four hundred thousand as profit. Other the real capital maintenance, they are saying that that one million at the at the beginning of the year cannot be one million at the end of the year. The price index. That reflects the, purchasing, the current purchasing power of money must be applied. And that index is given as an index of 10%. So if you apply 10% to uh, 1 million, you'll be having 1 million times 110 all over 100. 1 million times 110 all over 100. And that will give you 1 million 100,000. So when you subtract that restated opening valuation, from the closing valuation, you now have 300,000 as the profit there. Then under the maintenance of specific purchasing power, the specific price index applicable to that company is given as 15%. So the opening valuation, the, 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 the opening figure of 1 million will now be restated to reflect that purchasing power that is specific to the company. You now have 1 million times 115 and 100, and then you have 1 million 150,000. So the profit they are now is 250,000. So this is how this figure is obtained. So which one now is higher? The historical cost shows a higher, a higher profit, followed by the real capital, and then followed by the money maintenance, uh, I mean, the specific purchasing power related to the company. So this is the application of this uh, concept here, okay? So those are the approaches to capital maintenance. Here is the workings that I have shown to you. That, that is the workings. It could have implication. The, 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 the implication is not apparent here because tax is not introduced. But supposing you, are, you, you, now, you now apply tax to this calculation, if the tax element were to be, say, 40% payable, and then what you have next is this. The net assets of the company, uh, okay, I, I, have, I, have changed, I have changed the question again. Well, if closing net assets is 115, 115, 115, uh, for illustration, we, we, we change the question to another one again. We have, we have, we have, we have assumed opening, opening value of 100,000, closing value of uh, 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 115,000, given price index of 25%. You know, uh, if both the retail price index and the specific price index are both 25%, and then you now apply your tax. So what we have here is this. Um, Closing figure 115, uh, net assets, 100,000 for, for historical, 125 each for the other two methods. And the gain is 15,000 for historical, a loss of 10,000 for uh, uh, real uh, maintenance and uh, for specific index, another loss of 10,000. So tax at 40% will be 6,000, which 40% of 15,000. It will be zero for the other two. So note that the tax payment of 6,000 will not have a reason if the traditional profit measurement were not used. So it's a loss to the company that they are paying tax of 6,000 and that flow of cash from them. So if the other two methods were used, there will be no tax implication on, on, on it. So uh, all of this now explain, all of this explain the, Uh, the, the, uh, the, the capital maintenance. 
approaches to capital maintenance. So all, all of those ones were to explain the uh, approaches to capital maintenance. So using using these three approaches, that's what we have done so far. You know. So the next one is the uh, the next one is uh, we have gone through these questions now. We've gone through this question as well. Okay. So the, then what is operating capital maintenance concept? Operating capital maintenance concept, you know, what, what we did earlier was approaches to capital maintenance. Here now is what we call operating capital, operating capital. I will not be going into that to save us some uh, time. Uh, anyway, uh, well, let, let me just cover it because it will lead us to some formula which you will need when we want to come to current cost. So let us let us let us quickly take it. Okay. The value of an asset to the business and date of consumption, which is usually the replacement cost, is considered to be a more relationship to its historical cost that opportunity cost will. Opportunity cost is what you will do uh, the next the, what we do with the asset if it's not currently used for its present purpose. So the historical cost based on money capital maintenance can be divided into two parts: the current cost profit or operating gains and the holding gains. The current cost profit or the holding gains. When you talk of current cost profit, the profit due to inflation, well, that, that is the current cost profit. Uh, there, there's, another, there's another profit which we call the holding gains. Okay. If you hold an asset, if you hold an asset for for a length of time, and after that length of time, the asset changes in value. Element of holding gain will be there. Element of uh, current cost or inflation will also be there. So the, oper the, the operating gain is given as sales revenue minus replacement cost. Sales revenue minus re replacement, replacement cost. The amount at which you sell the item minus the amount at which uh, you can have it replaced. The holding, the holding gain is given as replacement cost minus historical costs. Look at this example. Take this example. A company buys an asset for 100,000 era or January 1, 2004, and it holds it for one year. And then after, the asset is sold for 160,000. Uh, one second, please. I'm checking an alert on this one. Uh, meanwhile, oh, somebody joined us the other time, and the person has left again, leaving, leaving just two of you. Okay, let's continue. So a company buys the asset for 100,000, January 2004, costs it for one year, then sells it for 160,000. When the replacement cost is 20,000. Remember, he bought the asset for 100,000 era. If he wants to buy the asset back now, he could buy it for 120,000, but he now sold it for 160,000, okay? What is the circle profit? Circle profit will be 160,000 minus 100,000, which is 60,000. Okay. So analyze that profit into operating gain and holding gain. That's what we want to do now. Into operating gain and holding gain. Circle profit is 60,000, like I said. Operating gain is sales revenue minus, minus replacement cost. 160,000 minus 120,000, which is 40,000. Then holding gain is a replacement cost minus circle cost. 120,000 minus 100,000, which is 20,000. So the total gain of 60,000 can be broken into two, an operating gain and uh, a holding gain. So like in most operations that you do with your inventories as well, uh, the changes in your, in your profit might be analyzed or, or to, might be analyzed as being due to volume or operations and then being due to holding such an asset. So 
not all are entirely due to uh, inflation. The actual current cost profit, which is the operating gain at the point of sale, must reflect the conditions at the, at the date of sale. The replacement cost of the asset at the time of purchase is equal to the historical cost of the asset. For the example above, the gain of 20,000 was made for holding the asset for one year. That is it. So depreciation adjustment. Now, the, these things we are considering now, these things that we are considering now are the adjustments which are needed for current cost accounting. These are the adjustments which are needed I mean, for operating capital maintenance. The holding gain and operating gain adjustment will have to be done. Then the second one is, uh, is uh, the depreciation adjustment. Depreciation adjustment is added to historical cost depreciation to obtain the current cost depreciation. You know, uh, we'll come to that when I take the next question. The monetary working capital adjustment also is an adjustment added to the historical cost profit to obtain the monetary working capital. This one has uh, a fairly not difficult but a fairly technical method of calculation as well. And then the gaining adjustment and attempt to adjust the current cost profit. Uh, price for the gains made from paying less than the current purchasing power of borrowing creditors. If you look at the calculations which follow, especially the question which I used in the last exam, in the previous exam, I can send you the video on the solution which I provided. You can understand that. But for this exam, you will not bother about all of these adjustments. The one that will concern you, I'll be taking the next question. You know, so current cost accounting. What are the purposes of preparing financial statement for stewardship reporting and for decision making? So, historical cost is unable to reflect the effect of changing prices. However, historical cost has the advantage of objectivity. Listen to this. Although historical cost lacks uh, object, uh, lacks, uh, so, uh, it's unable to reflect changing value of price, changing prices, but it has the advantage of objectivity because the figure is what it is. The current cost accounting considers capital maintenance as the maintenance of operating capacity. Current value estimates are the problem of subjectivity involved in ascertaining values. The following valuation methods are considered in current cost accounting. Uh, these are the valuation methods which are used in current cost accounting. Economic value, the present value, dollar value, replacement cost, NRV or recovery by matter. I have explained this once earlier. Now, what they now say, what are the adjustments needed for the production of current cost financial statements? You go back to a question there. That's a question there that says, what are the adjustments needed for the production of current cost financial statements? The adjustments are adjustments to non-current assets, depreciation adjustment, inventory adjustment, cost of sales adjustment, monetary working capital adjustment, and jamming adjustment. Those are the, so those are the things which we use this question to illustrate. We use this question to illustrate those ones. I will not be going to this question because it will be taking so much uh, time. And what follows here, what follows here is the interpretation of the applications which we made to, to those questions and how to obtain all, the, all those ones. All right. Now let's leave this and go to and go to the question where we want to apply some of the things that we just learned. Let's let's see. Is it here or uh, here? Maybe it could be here. Okay. No, not here. It is going to be here. Okay. It's going to be here. Okay. So list the asset valuation methods normally applied in correct cost accounting. You'll have found that in the notes, which I gave to you. Okay. Um, oh. No, this is that. This is the same question which I said we we are not uh, using. Let's go up. Let's go up and go to another question. Okay, this is our question now of the day. This is a past CIBN question. Chinese of bankers, maybe in the eighties or so, even when inflation was not so severe. We have provided with the summarized income statement of Turaki Limited for the year that first about twenty eighteen. I came the year to make it low current. The statement prepared under the Stryker Cost Convention is as follows. Look at it, income statement. It says, less cost of sales. Opening stock plus purchases, less uh, closing stock. That's what you have here. 750 plus 3,000 minus 920, 50. Gross profit is uh, uh, 2150. 
less depreciation, 375, other general expenses, 1375. And now total expenses become 1750. Take the difference from 1350, you have 400 as a net profit. Okay. This income statement is, 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 is the historical cost income statement. Now, we now have the index. We are given indices, I mean, indices for stock and for fixed assets. You will need the indices, the indices for stock in calculating the cost of sales adjustment. You need the, 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 the indices uh, for fixed assets. In, in either adjusting the fixed assets or the related depreciation. That's what you need that for. Not any other, not any other thing. Okay. Let's go to, let's go to, um, the cost of sales adjustment. The question says that we should, we should restate this. We should pay a current cost, uh, current cost, uh, Income statement. I'm going to use two approaches in, in, in solving this problem. But let's go to the first. The first and foremost, you must, you must calculate. You must you must calculate uh, the current the cost of sales, the cost of sales adjustment, and the depreciation adjustment. Others, I think you can do part A. Outline the main arguments for and against changing from the local cost basis to the current cost basis for repairing company accounts. You tell us the advantage of historical cost and it's a disadvantage. Tell us the of current cost and it's a disadvantage. That's all, well, simply put. One is subjective, one is subjective. One is uh, inflation built, the other one is not inflation built. These are the things you want to mention. Okay, prepare the current cost profit and loss account of the company, showing the cost of sales adjustment and the depreciation adjustment. Let us start. For the cost of sales adjustment, COSA, I call, I, I call that one COSA. Cost of sales adjustment, COSA. Cosa is given as a current cost of sales, current cost, cost of sales, minus historical cost, cost of sales. Can you put that down? Cosa, because you must state that one at the start of your solution, uh, cost of sales adjustment is given as current cost, cost of sales, minus historical cost, cost of sales. What is the current cost, cost of sales? And what is the historical cost, cost of sales in this question? What is the current cost, cost of sales in this question? I mean, historical cost, cost of sales rather. Cost of goods sold. What is the historical cost, cost of goods sold in this income statement? 2008. Yes, you are right. Historical cost, cost of goods sold is 2,850. That is 2,850,000. 2,000,000. Uh, no, it's not a million. It's just twenty fifty. No nera thousand raised. So it has not eight hundred fifty. That's that's the figure there. Okay. So you want you you will now calculate the current cost uh, cost of goods sold. Only two figures will change there. The opening stock and the closing stock will be inflation built to show new values. Purchases is presumed to have occurred evenly over the year. Are already inflation built, so it, it will not be adjusted. Purchases will not be adjusted. So the 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 formula for converting opening stock or for, 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 for converting stock to current cost of stock is given as the historical cost of that stock of the, the, the historical cost of stock multiplied by the average index for the year. Average index for the year, all over the index at the beginning. Average index for the year, all over the index at the beginning for opening stock. The for closing stock, it will be the historical cost figure of opening of, of closing stock, applied by the average index for the year, all over the index at the end. This figure now says that uh, you should assume a stock turn or so of three months. Is it? No, uh -huh. the fixed assets of the company were purchased on January 2014. You are informed that the stocks on the average turns over every three months. So the, the, if the average index for 2018 is uh, for stock is uh, 126, is it 126? No, 124, Abby. Hey, Solomon, Abby. 124. 
the opening index, the the opening index will be 120 uh, for stock because I'm going to use the average for October through December. That's what that question is telling us. Then the closing index for stock will be 126, which is the average for October to December 2018, because they say the stock on the average turns over once every three months. That's why we're going to use uh, such a, a figure. Therefore, the current cost figure for the current cost figure, the current cost uh, uh, opening stock figure for this question will be given as what I was trying to do a calculation before the start of the class. Okay, that will be 750. Is it 750? That will be 750 multiplied by 124 all over 120. 750 multiplied by 124 all over 120. 124 being the average index for 2018, and 120 being the opening index. The index, the index at the beginning, the average index at the beginning, October, December 2017. So what will that give us? 750 times 124 divided by 120. That's what. 750 times 124 divided by 120 equals to what? 775. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So the 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 current cost value of opening inventory is now 775 obtained as 750 times uh, 124 by 120. The current cost value of closing inventory will be 900 times 124 over 126. 900 times 124 over 126. And that will give us eight, what, what will that give us? This one is giving me 886 or so. 900 multiplied by 900 multiplied by multiplied by multiplied by what multiply by uh, 124 divided by 126 I think the question told us to what the nearest 10 era I, I, I'm not sure whether that is indicated. If it's not indicated, then don't worry. But for the purpose of the exam, if you are faced with uh, a question like this, this 885.7 becomes 886. So this is 886. 885.7. Eh? Yes, yes, yes. The person never, never use them for like a week, sir. Yes, ma'am. Battery, uh, I think. I did tell you, mute, mute your, mute your something so that uh, we will not be hearing you. What you are saying is not related to us. Mute your audio when you want to talk outside the class. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, you are here. The current cost of closing stock is 886. The current cost of opening stock is 775. What will now be the current cost of sales? That is going to be 775. 775 plus purchases 3000 minus uh, closing stock 886. And what will that give us? 2889. 2889. You know, 2089. The the current cost cost of sales of sales is uh, 2889. What is the historical uh, cost cost of sales? Historical cost cost of sales is what? 2850. Abetic bagby is giving you the question. 2850 is there. So the difference is uh, nine. Yes, uh, eight minus five, three. Difference is 39. So 39 is the cost of sales adjustment. Subtract the historical cost, cost of sales, 
from the current cost cost of sales, you have the current you have the cost of sales adjustment, and that is 39. 39. So the cost size is 39. That's the calculation they are asking you to show. You know, the cost size is 39 there. You know, you you first of all obtain the uh soccer cost cost of sales, 2050. We just say soccer cost of sales is 2050. You can bracket given because it's the question. Then you now say calculation of the uh, current cost cost of sales underlined. You say number one, uh, historical, I mean, current cost opening stock is equal to historical cost opening stock times average index all over index at the uh, beginning. Historical cost, opening, current cost opening stock is equal to 750 times 124 all over 120 is equal to 775. You you leave that. Then you now say current cost of closing stock is equal to historical cost of closing stock times average index all over index at end. And this is equal to 900 times 124 all over 126 is equal to 886. Current cost cost of sales is 775 plus 2850 minus 886, and that is equal to 2889. Therefore, uh, uh, I mean, not therefore, uh, COSA, cost of sales adjustment is equal to current cost, cost of sales, minus historical cost, cost of sales, which is equal to 2889, no, no, which is equal to 39. Current, I mean, cost of set adjustment is equal to 39. That is the calculation they wanted to show. The next one, again, they, they're asking for is the depreciation adjustment. Depreciation adjustment. The historical cost depreciation is given as 375. It's, it's 375. The current cost depreciation will be historical cost depreciation multiplied by average index all over index at the end. The index for the fixed assets at uh, uh, the average for 2018 is 134. The index at the end of 2018 is 130 is 136. Is 136. Is 136. Is that the formula for for our asset valuation? The valuation which we did for our asset at that time, what were, how was the index applied? Is it, let me, let me, let me check. Where we were doing our valuations on those uh, assets. Anybody remember? You are on and off. Uh, is everything all right? I want to be reminded about how we applied our, okay. Okay, when we are converting this, okay. Okay, 150 and 100, okay. It is, it is the, it is the, We used in getting the current purchasing power or current value. I think the average index is the one that is uh, at the bottom. Let's see. This one says. This one says. If the if the index one and ten and fifteen, so it times one and ten all over all over one hundred. Okay. So the balance, the, 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 the index and the data balance sheet will be on top. So when you want to convert the uh, non-current uh, assets here, depreciation here, the, the current cost depreciation will be given as historical cost depreciation multiplied by index at uh, balance sheet date, balance sheet date uh, all over the average index. 
all over the average index. Okay. And then what is the historical cost? What is the historical cost depreciation in this question? It is 375. 375. And that will be 375 multiplied by what is the index and balance sheet date? December 2018, 136, 136. And what is the index at date of uh, purchase? Okay. Index and date of purchase. Index and date of purchase, January 2014, 100. 100. Index and date of purchase, 100. Okay, that's 100. January 2014, 100. So what do you now have? 375 times 136 over 100 is equal to what? 375 times 136 divided by 100. And that gives you 510. 510. 510. Yes. What is the average for 2018? Okay, average for 2018 is 132. Let's see, because we are not we are not we are not looking at cumulative. We are looking at just one annual charge. Okay, 375, 375 multiplied by 136 divided by 132. 386, 386, 386. Okay. Uh, Adetai, is you and I alone now? So the formula to note is the current cost depreciation will be obtained as historical cost depreciation multiplied by the price index at balance sheet date, which is 136 here for fixed assets, divided by the average price index for 2018 for fixed assets, which is 134. So you will now be having 375 multiplied by 136 all over, oh, is it 134? Okay, okay, uh, uh, okay, 134. All over 134, 375 times 136, all over 134. And that will give us 375 multiplied by 136 divided by 134. And that will give us 380.59, or otherwise called, let us use 381 for that. So the current contribution is 381, and the historical contribution is a 375. So therefore, depreciation adjustment is equal to current cost depreciation minus historical cost depreciation. And that is equal to 381 minus 375. And that will give us six. I mean, no, that will give us, uh, what is 381 minus 376? That's, that's, that looks like five. That looks like five. And that will give us five. That is five. Okay. So there are two approaches that you can use to now present to us, to, 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 now, to now present your answer. When they say prepare the current cost profit and loss account for the, for the company, showing the cost of sales, adjustment and the, the particular adjustment. You can start by saying, you can, you can start with the historical cost net profit. You know, if you say current cost profit and loss account for the year, so, so, so. I will now say historical cost net profit 400, less cost of sales adjustment uh, of how much, of how much, a good day was a cost of sales adjustment. A good day was a cost of sales adjustment. 39, 39, 39. And then less depreciation adjustment, five. So you'll be adding uh, the two to get 44. So 44 taken away from uh, uh, 400, uh, from 400, the balance is your profit. You know? no. Or you, what you can do is to now use the new stock figures use the new stock figures for opening stock and closing stock, and then use the new uh, depreciation figure as well, and prepare the income statement as shown in the, in the, in the balance sheet. We still get the same current cost profit of uh, 400 minus uh, 45, uh, uh, 360, uh, 355 or so. That would be the solution to that question. Maybe when your colleagues join you, because you're the only person here now, when your colleagues join you, and then you revise the 
question with the video, you might have you know, you might have better understanding uh, of it. So that is it. If there are questions on this, let me know uh, on the group platform. Since you are the only person here now, I don't think there's any sense in continuing. So what about, do you, do you have questions to ask? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So let me thank you. Let me thank you for staying on. If you had gone like others as well, that it, it wouldn't have made any sense, me talking to nobody. I don't know why they just decided to make a way with it. If that is the way this topic is. Even when it was taught the first time in the class, uh, people did not really like it. And instead of just staying back to pursue it, they ran away from it. Too bad. So thank you. This will be the end of the lecture for the semester. Thank you very much, Sam. Yeah. So